ages ago I picked up these insulated standoffs because I thought they looked cool and I might have something I could use them for and I've decided to have a go at making a single shot high voltage potentially high current as well switch um, had a go with a couple of divines using springs and a little track and stuff like that but didn't get any real success so I thought oh bugger it we'll go keep it simple and I've just got both a pendulum and a cage for it to sit in and then this will sit where the stand is there but I just want to take some high speed video and work out how fast the pendulum is going past the spot at the bottom there so I'll give that a go Okay, so I got some video at uh, four and a half thousand frames a second, just over, and it took 49 frames to cross in front of the mark I had on the ruler, which I think means it's about 4.4 meters per second, roughly 17 kilometers an hour, uh, but it took just under a tenth of a second to cross the thing, so that's about what my pulse is going to be, and I think that seems reasonable. We'll carry on and see what we can do. I 3D printed some pincers and uh, got a little spring from the hardware shop. The idea is that the pendulum here will swing through and get caught in the trap. Uh, I need to design a proper release mechanism but it'll be something similar to this and it works. Hey okay, now with the trigger. So I've uh, put a safety arrangement here as a pin that drops right through and I'll be able to pull this away chamfered these so they go into the jaws a little bit better and lovely. I think I need to get some high speed of it going into the clipper though. While I was uh, tuning this and playing around with it, getting the geometries right, I realised that I was spending quite a lot of time standing here in the middle, resetting it and, and freeing this stuff up. So I've made some ribbon and some guides around here, and if I pull on this, it opens the jaws for me, which will allow me to do it back from back here without having to go near where all the nasty high voltage stuff is. I can just fling this back and we're good. So I think the next step is going to be to put the contacts in and give it a run. Okay, time to see if I can figure out what I blew up. So I pulled out the other diodes that were in there and put in some the other two that I have. Uh, just tested the capacitance on the bank and it's actually pretty much what I would expect 70, so 78 nanofarads from the eight of, uh, yeah, eight of them there so I suspect it is the diodes uh, but let's power it up and see what we get I've hooked up the high voltage probe on the right hand side of the bank and switch this over to DC volts if I turn it on at the mains. That's better. I hear a hum. Alright, looks like we're on the negative side. Well, looking good so far. And yeah, I'm in minus 20,000 on that side. So that looks good. I think probably say it really is the diodes, which is nice. I'll check the other side just to confirm. Right, over on the other side. Yep, positive as expected. Yep, 
and 20k. So yes, I have blown up my diodes, which is annoying, but probably the least annoying part of it too have blown up because I can just make more. These are actually surprisingly cheap. They're um, 50 lots of 1000 volt 3 amp diodes that I found for it was 11 or 17 cents each. It took me like probably a week of nights soldering them all together to make them but uh, they're actually pretty cheap so I'll make some more. I think these ones I had a uh, 10 mega ohm resistor across the back of every single diode which meant that I had to snip them off and solder them around and that was a giant pain in the ass um, but that is there to balance the voltage across them so that they shouldn't any individual diode should still have pretty much what the voltage is across so the tolerance of the resistors is less than the diode differences in breakdown voltages um, but it's also been suggested that I could just use half as many diodes again so use 75 say it's good for 50 and that will actually be less soldering and um, I'll also be able to test them properly because the other problem with these is that because they actually do have just a resistor across for the reverse current um, the oscilloscope sees all of the voltage through it if I hook it up and I can't see whether it's rectifying or not uh, but if I do it with just diodes, I'll be able to do that as well. So one of those is broken, probably only one of them. I'll need to figure out which one. And I need to figure out how to protect my diodes so that I don't do it again.